Welcome again to the Practical Enneagram. Catherine Favre is the founder of Catherine Favre Consulting and Ennea Style and co-founder of Enneagram Explorations and Favre Research. She's a personality expert and an internationally recognized author, teacher, trainer, coach and researcher. Among other things, she is the creator of Tritype and the Instinctual and Tritype Stackings and Identifications. Catherine's innovative and groundbreaking work on Tritype and Instinctual Stackings has made her a thought leader in the Enneagram field. She she works with businesses, families, couples and individuals. Catherine began her study of the Enneagram in 1985. Since that time, she has conducted over 23 research studies exploring many facets of the internal experience of the types, including the Enneagram instinctual subtypes and instinct tritypes. She's also the author of 17 Enneagram products. I approached Catherine with the hunger to better understand whether tritype was a theory I can work with for my own development and eventually bring into my coaching practice. Lacking a clear way to do either of those things and having the sense that I'm missing out on a potentially very useful and instrumental part of what the Enneagram can offer, I wanted to put a few questions to her. Catherine really generously gave of her time. I think maybe we spent three hours together total, firstly debriefing her test and then going into some specific questions I have about tritype, which is what this conversation is. I can see myself bringing this in as a lens in my coaching practice, but not, of course, before I'm clear on how I can use it myself. Catherine helped me to see that I'm probably a four, six, nine tritype, which has opened up some useful explorations for me, um, in particular about how doubt and narcotization manifest in my experience. Catherine has a lot of information on her website and helpful stuff on her YouTube channel course offerings and also you can book one-on-one coaching sessions with her which i recommend links to everything in the show notes in the 90s late 80s and 90s i just massively typed everybody that would allow me to because i wanted to know the inner workings of the types i'd studied many typologies prior to the enneagram and i wanted to correlate the meanings and the significance of the influences, all of it, anything I could find. And what I discovered is that people appeared to have the core fears and defense strategies of three types, not just one. There was still a dominant type. That was not the issue. But that what was most noteworthy, it was one from each center. And originally, I could just recognize oh, that could be a wing type, that could be a line of connection. But there were way too many people where that wasn't true. And I'd done all my research on the core fears before I learned about the Enneagram. I just did it again with that in mind. So I just began collecting the data. And then in 1994, 95, I started doing formal research where I was doing qualitative and quantitative research to see what would hold true with people from different countries, different cultures, different age groups. And there it was. So Mm -hmm. I asked everybody I knew about it and they didn't know anything. They thought, well, sure, Catherine, okay, you see that. But what happened quickly thereafter, within a year and a half, I found out about Oscar Chazo adding trifix to his work. But then I thought, oh, it's the same thing. He Mm -hmm. recognizes there's a type in each center and that we use all three in an oscillating order. So that was kind of a finished concept. And I moved on and I knew that I'd found something that he'd also found. And it helped give nuances to type that would explain why a 964, 469, 694 all use the same three types. They share the same heart type, the same gut type, and the same head type. So they see eye to eye more than, let's say, a four with a different tri-type. And first I thought it was the instincts, and I was doing the instinctual study simultaneously, and that certainly added wonderful dimensions. But ultimately what happened is I wrote a lot of what I found, and it was out on the internet, But I called it trifix because I thought, why confuse people? Mm -hmm. But what I didn't know at the time is that because they developed separate from one another, I didn't know Chazo's work. He didn't know my work is that he was only using the fixation. So and I was 
using the whole type, the dynamic aspects of the type, the lines of connection, the wings, all of the motor of the type and the full defense strategy. And that when they come together, they merge to create a new type unto itself, a more specific type. Now your dominant Enneagram type that everybody knows about is still in charge, the CEO, but these other two are woven in and they shape and modify, enhance and define or diminish aspects. So for example, what do four, six and nine all share? Doubt. Mm. So anyone with that tri-type is going to be well aware of their tendency to doubt. But what else do they share? They're all seekers. So the seeking person that has doubts, they go off and search of mysteries and quests and things that they want to understand at a deeper level. And then when they get to the potential answer, there are more questions and the questions aren't always bad. It leads them to more things to pursue. Mm. And Chazo called the nine, the seeker, and we all know fours are spiritually focused. And we all know that the six will take the shape of the type and their tri-type. And that's why they don't recognize themselves. That's a whole nother story. They have a mm-hmm. fear of fear itself. So They don't recognize it. But yeah, so what happened is it ended up being tri-type. So when I met with Chazo's Ricans, people that studied under him and formed his company and his nonprofit, actually, we decided that it made sense for him to have the word trifix because he only used the fixation Mm -hmm. and for me to have tritype. And I loved it because it was the difference. And there were details and nuances available by separating them. Otherwise, everybody thought that what I wrote came from Achazo and it didn't. It came from my research. 99.9% of what's out there came from people participating in my studies. So the tritype archetype is the three types together. And mathematically, it's every combination of the three centers. So every four with every combination it can have in a gut and and a head type and so on. So it's math. It's totally Mm -hmm. mathematical. And then there's a way to extend it beyond that, which I will do in the future. It's something you have to see visually. And then people will understand, oh, it isn't something to believe in or not believe in. It's just math. Mm-hmm. Three, six, nine adds up to nine. Mm-hmm. Two, five, eight adds up to six. And one, four, seven adds up to three. Those are the first tri-types. But mm-hmm. then they extend out on the nine line, on the, th- the three line, mm-hmm. and on the six line. And then you see that we recognize some of these tri-types because we had the Hornavians, we had Naranjo and Achazo's antipodes plus the primary center. We had nine of them that we all recognize. It's fascinating to see on a chart where they're positioned. And even though they jump over tri-types that should have been recognized, they still have an extraordinary line of emergence from the 369 and the 147. Mm -hmm. So anyhow, I've been exploring that ever since. I just found that with people that if you know their tri-type, you can help them work with things at a deeper level. And why the 478 just must be creative. Mm. And the 469 must pursue the mysteries of life. And even Mm. though you could do both, it's like a way in which we feel we must do it yeah. like a calling so it mm. better defines our approach or the way in which we will seek our spiritual journey the path that we will take our sense mm-hmm. of purpose mm-hmm. okay so i just want to get rid of some of the preconceptions or myths that have crept into my understanding so okay. having a tri type does not mean that we have the behaviors of all three types, although it it might mean that. It's not about behavior. Anyone can have good or bad behavior with the Mm. main Enneagram type or your Mm tri-type, but it's the way in which you will view and respond to situations. But it's Mm. governed by your instinct, by the way. The instinct is the lower functioning aspect of the Enneagram. So 
when there's a threat to our instinct, real or imagined, goes into action and starts compulsively telling us do this or do that according to our tri-type. And Mm -hmm. if we don't do that, we don't feel at ease. The problem is when the three types in our tri-type agree, we make a decision immediately. Mm -hmm. But when they don't, it's harder. But we ultimately go with the universal principle of the tri-type. Okay. So the instinct has a bearing there. So when we identify our tri-type archetype, we're looking at the, uh, so in my case, self pres for self pres 9, self pres 6. So it also doesn't mean, because this was another misconception I had, it doesn't mean that we just have the type style in the specific centre. So it doesn't mean that I behave like a 9 in my gut or my belly centre and like a 6 in my mental centre because it's all of the patterns. It's not just the the center pattern. I'm not sure because Mm. you will think like your head type, you will act like your gut type or not act. Mm. And you will use your heart type to manage things. Because if you think about it, lines of connection, there are four types that don't have three centers. That's why Chazo found it was important and why I found it was important because it was distorted. Now I had hoped for a real easy layout that you'd have one instinct with one center and that they, and it still can be done at a higher level, but the, instinct turned out to be so dominant. And when I started this research, the instinct subtype was thought to be just like a mini passion. It was Mm. not, we didn't look at all three, even Mm. though obviously there always were all three to each type, but Naranjo had taken a Chazo centers and its description of the centers. And he had made a more primitive quality to them and created subtypes. Now I'm talking about Naranjo. A Chazo centers, Naranjo who took and put them as subtypes under the ego types, which is what we all know and talk about is the general ego types. So that it made a threefold plan of the primitive self, the ego self, and the essential self. And it it really works. It was a wonderful contribution that mm. Naranjo added. But a lot of people think there aren't subtypes, but actually, if you know how it was created, there are. Mm, okay. So imagine a Chazo, the way he looked at the center because he called them triads and he called them instinctual triads. Naranjo called them centers of intelligence to not interfere with Achazo's copyrighted information, his intellectual mm. property. That's the only reason they have a different name. Mm, but wow. they're talking about the same thing described differently. Hmm. So it is that we do, say in my case, behave like a four in my heart center, a nine like in my gut belly center, six in my head center. But I'm also using the other defenses that six and nine use. It's not just that my center manifests that style. Right, right. It's like a a machine that the type goes, like if we look at the placement of four, then four type is four, but four moves out to wing three and back out to five and back. So while that's happening, just repetitiously, it's also moving out to each line of connection and back. And that creates eight movements off of one type, which is nine. And everything again with the Enneagram is nine. So it's like an engine, like a piston. If I could find someone yeah. to do it, it would be, but it's like they're they're operating every day, all day. Wow. Yeah. So you need the whole thing to mobilize the Enneagram so that you're moving around the Enneagram and within the Enneagram. Okay. So try type, as you've said, creates a whole unique focus of attention, including idealized image, triggers, fears, concerns, desires, and preoccupations that produce a worldview, innate gifts, life purpose, and patterns of defense, innate struggles, and a healing growth edge. So basically, without try type theory, there's a whole sort of aspect of things to observe and develop that we're missing out on if we're not bringing this theory into the growth process. Yeah, it's a wonderful attribute because like you can take any tri-type, take mine, the four, seven, eight. I have all three creative types, creative Mm -hmm. type of each center, the change element in each center. And then I have the four and seven, which always like the unusual. I have seven and eight, which are assertive and on the move. And you just put that together like an engine and you see why the four, seven, eight is doing what they're doing. Mm. 
it really defines aspects of our types that we didn't realize. It's not like we're suddenly putting on these tri-types. They were always there. There was just not an easy way for people to recognize them because they weren't in the original dissemination of the Enneagram. And then with these archetypes, there's also, as you've said, these strengths and these gifts that are also not being embraced by the person who isn't aware of their tri-type. I think that that's quite a big deal as well. And that I suppose is something else I wanted to talk with you about or ask you about is there's essence qualities that have been mapped with each type. Presumably there is with tri-type as well. You have three essence qualities mm. that merge together the same way. Right. So doing spiritual work is just that. You're trying to balance your instincts because mm. that's the more primitive self and use all of them, like eat when you're hungry, sleep when you're tired, take whatever action you need to be in the company of others, whatever your need is, social, intimate, or self-preservation. And when they're balanced, it's easier to then take the holy virtues and the holy ideas and use them. But here's the key. If you properly identify your tri-type, you immediately see your sense of purpose Mm -hmm. and why you Mm -hmm. want to pursue something. So if we take away the psychological defense strategy and what have you, and just look at the holy ideas and the holy virtues, it's what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And you just think, okay, what is the holy idea of four? Mm -hmm. What is the holy idea of nine? What is the holy idea of six? Well, you can look at it many ways, whether it's Chazo Naranjo or whatever. And so we can look at those broken out the way they've traditionally been language, and it's still true. But if you want truth and you want to seek and you you just won't be happy if you're not doing what your three types in your tri-type are telling you at the essential level. Well, wow. so map not- where you are in the three and seven fold plan. Like if you had three in the tri-type, the struggle at the essential level is letting go of believing you have to be the doer. Mm. And if you have a seven in the tri-type, you have to let go of believing that you can manipulate it the way you want and that it's already in motion. Mm -hmm. And it's the interaction of the way the three come together. That's why we use that Enneagram symbol and not another nine-pointed Enneagram symbol, which I do use for other things. But it's Mm -hmm. motion in the universe. It means divinity plus plus creativity. Mm. And that's what that symbol represents. And if anyone dealing with sort of big spiritual questions, that's an important piece to know that purpose thing that's bound up in the tri-type archetype. I definitely feel a lot of resonance with mine. I haven't gone deep a lot into the seeker archetype, but just um, from what I understand about it. Don't have to answer this or address it, but a thing that you hear repeatedly is that bringing this in dilutes the major work or or takes people off from concentrating on the core work that they need to do on their type or their passion. And my impression of that is that's not true for anyone who's intending to interact deeply with the Enneagram. For people who are not and who are just wanting to interact with it in a less depth way, maybe try type. Is there is well, there something? You... There are two ways to look at it. Someone mm. that wants to stay shallow will stay shallow with any system at any time. Mm. People that want to work will go deeply. And then there are those in between. I tried teaching the Enneagram from every perspective. Mm. I did it starting with the centers. I've done it starting with the instincts. I've done it with the types in different orders. And I've done it with the tri-type where you just choose what you think your defense strategies fall into what type in each center. And I will tell you, it dramatically changed the resistance of people that felt they had to get the type in the very beginning. And they stayed interested Mm -hmm. in the system. Whereas if they just sort of got their type, but their dance new, they might just go out again. But the difference with tri-type, it did exactly the opposite. Mm -hmm. It made people really understand their core type. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people who don't understand tri-type think that it dilutes Mm -hmm. or that it takes away from, but it's omnipresent. It's not an add-on. 
you know, it's already there. It's just whether you see it or not and take advantage of it. But I've found the opposite, which mm-hmm. is why I've just put everything out that way. Because with tri-type, you can get generally two of the three. And that you only get two when you have a primary type, because the mm-hmm. six and the nine are meant to track behaviors and not motivations. Mm-hmm. It's just your job. So are threes. But the problem is the three knows they want to be successful and dynamic and driven and adaptable. And so it works for them, but they have just as much trouble determining their lines Mm -hmm. of connection and everything else and understanding it. So the three, six and nine are the primary triad that it's all built upon. So if you have one or more in your tri-type, you're closer to the core, you're less of a variant. So you're less specialized, you're more universal, but you'll identify with the type that is not the three, six or nine. Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Because you're not seeing it and you're not meant to, but I can see it and having other people learn how to see it. It's very, very easy to see. So that's why I even made my test in a way that followed what over 100,000 test takers did with their testing instrument and Mm. how they took the test, what they chose when, and there's so many wonderful patterns. So even though the six and nine can have trouble with tests, and they're meant to, because it's sometimes, or maybe it could be. For the nine, it's, well, I can be that too. And for the six, well, I'm not that part of that type, and I'm not that part. So it's just the oppositional is the six, Mm -hmm. and the inclusive is the nine, and that's what's meant to happen. That's the law of three. For every initiation, there's an opposition and there's a return to neutral integration. Mm. So, you know, I think it might be helpful to understand that there's a high and low side of your tri-type. You know, the Mm. high side is that it creates this intersection of these three types and it gives your life a more specific direction, focus, and sense of purpose. Mm. The low side of this intersection is that in a way they collude and can miss the mark, meaning there's a blind spot, an inherent blind spot that we all have to recognize with our primary type or our tri-type. We have to know what it is, and it makes it harder to self-assess. So knowing what the blind spot is for a type or try type really helps all of us see things that we wouldn't ordinarily see or hear things we wouldn't ordinarily hear. That what you just said about if people learn try type in tandem or at the same time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Then, then it's going to capture those people who are just alienated by being in that core type, which is a lot of people because obviously the descriptions miss a lot of people out that's a good point descriptions of behavior that's very hard to write yeah that's why you have to focus on what the defense mechanism is and what the react like the one it's reaction formation they feel something ugly and angry and it rises up and they want to say it but they cut it off because a good person does not say that so they mm, the jaw just tightens up and that's what they're meant to do because they're Core fear is of being wrong, bad, evil, corruptible. So they're going to always be working on their high side, which is accepting mm-hmm. what is. Mm-hmm. So it is quite beautiful, actually. But the, the intensity with which we run these energies are happening everywhere by everyone. Mm-hmm. Whether they know it or not, whether it's <laughs> yeah. a cab driver or whether it's someone that's just talking about philosophy. Whatever we do is influenced by our type and our tri-type and our instinctual mm-hmm. stacking. Mm-hmm. That's why there, I have stackings for both of them. That's what I recognize. It wasn't just the one or the other. that You had to stack the instincts. You had to stack the centers. There's a hierarchy. It's complete with kind of ego strategies and coping mechanisms from each center uh, focus. And we're born with these. We didn't know Mm -hmm. that when the Enneagram began, it was a a time that was very much focused on nurture. Mm -hmm. So we believed family dynamics created our type, but Mm -hmm. with brain science and everything is biological, but nurture dramatically influences the expression of our type. We didn't get the opportunity or 
who weren't supported in our type were going to have more difficulty than someone that had a parent that was the same type that, that encouraged the focus. I have to yeah. say focus that mm-hmm. resulted in behavior. So it's like right. the Enneagram type, the instinctual type stacking, and the tri-type stacking together equals the behavior. It's what they're doing. But in the human condition, we only have seven primary emotions. So we can do combinations of those emotions and they can kind of look familiar. They won't feel the same. Anger feels different from one type to the next because the focus is different. There's a different core fear and need, corresponding need. This seeker archetype is satisfied for now. Thank you, Fabrice, for being Um, so generous with my... Oh, my gnawing questions about this for making nope, time. For no it. problem. <laughs> it was a pleasure meeting you. I know that sometimes these things have to be explained a little more. Yeah, totally. That is that is the case for it. Alrighty. Um, hope that that tickled your fancy. In the next conversation on the podcast, I'll be speaking with Denise Groppola, who's a Jungian analyst and an Enneagram expert. So excitingly, we'll be looking at how those two cross section don't forget to subscribe and do rate the podcast Mm -hmm.